Okay, so starting off our topic about the physical aspects of the moon with the lunar surface. So I have a chat question for you to start off with. Um, hopefully you were able to read some about these different lunar surface features. Um, the, I actually don't know how to pronounce that word, but I think it's Katnas. So the Katnas, the craters, the highlands, the Maria, the moon dust, and the rills. So my question for you, um, take a minute and type in the chat, which one of those do you think were created by geology? And which ones do you think were created by interactions with space in some way? Okay. So it seems like for the most part, uh, we think that the Maria and Highlands are geological features and the rest of them we're thinking are maybe space, maybe the rills are geology. All right, and the Katna is probably the most, I think Katna and rill are the most, you know, bizarre new terms. So maybe that's, you know, you just don't remember, which is fine. Okay, so created by ge geology, yes, those are the Maria, the highlands, and the rills. These are all surface features that are essentially due to the surface of the moon either cooling or being formed during, you know, the process of differentiation or having something to do with early lunar volcanism. So we'll talk about all these in more detail. And then things that were created by interactions with space, of course, craters, uh, the moon dust as well as a product of, of crater impacts, and then Katnas all are also a crater feature. So let's talk about all these individually, starting with the highlands. So the highlands are the light colored um, hilly and their um, higher up surfaces on the moon raised regions. They're made of lighter materials, silicates that floated to the surface when the moon was molten. So this uh, is a product of differentiation. So while the moon was still molten, the less dense material floats to the top and that is the lunar highland. Meanwhile, the maria are flatter, they're dark colored. The reason they're flatter is because they were formed from lava flows. So these also tend to be made of more dense material because it's material that was in the interior of the moon and then only came to the surface as a result of volcanism. So if you just look at the surface of the moon, um, you can pretty clearly pick out which regions are highland and which regions are maria. The maria are um, clearly a lot darker than the highlands and you can see the texture of the highlands is, is different than the maria as well. So a question for you is, let's imagine that I fly an orbiter around the moon and it measures the altitude of each point on the moon's surface. So this is what we call an altimeter. So imagine an altimeter in orbit around the moon, tracking elevation changes in its orbit. Which of those plots below do you think would correctly show the elevation of the Highlands and Maria in this orbiter's data set? And I'm seeing the most votes for option number three. That's exactly right. So the highlands are rough surface features. They're covered by lots of craters. The maria are very smooth and they're also lower in elevation. So both of those together, um, option three would be the best choice for that. Okay, sorry, I lost my windows here. There we go. All right, so if we look at the surface features, um, we can also use surface features to age the moon. So cratering is one of the ways that we've talked about that we can use to age objects. The other, of course, is radioactive dating. So considering just the appearance, the physical appearance of these two areas, uh, which would you say must be older? Okay, um, I see most votes for one that the highlands would be older based on this appearance. Is uh, someone comfortable with sharing your reasoning for why the highlands would be older? Yep, it's had longer to be impacted and also it hasn't had any uh, erasure of those craters. So this, um, it, it shows that the surface is younger, not necessarily that the object is a different age in those regions, but that that surface is younger. Awesome, thank you. So yes, the highlands are the older region. This is 
part of how we know that they were formed earlier in the process of differentiation. The composition of the highlands is also a clue. Um, but before we had gone to the lunar surface in the Apollo missions, we didn't have any lunar surface samples that, that we could have done radioactive dating on to find the age. So we would have had to rely on crater aging at that time to figure out that the highlands were older. Okay, so how exactly do we use crater counts to date surfaces? Well, um, yeah, like you said, the highlands have more craters, so they should be older proportional to the number of craters that they have. So if you actually do a careful measurement, which we'll do for Mercury, but not for the moon, um, the highlands end up having 10 times more craters than the Maria. So you might think that they are therefore 10 times older. Um, but this idea is kind of bonkers if you look at the Maria, because the Maria samples, if you radioactively date them, are 3.3 to 3.8 billion years old. And so 10 times that would be something like 33 to 38 billion years old. And the highlands of the moon cannot be 38 billion years old because the universe itself is only 13.8 billion years old. So clearly something um, breaks down if you take this process uh, to its logical conclusion. So maybe our assumptions are wrong or maybe something actually was just different in the past. Well, we think that what's going on is that the uh, impact crater has formation rate has not always been constant. So there's not always just a constant number of impacts per you know, million years or whatever. Instead, it seems that in the past, in the way, way distant past, like past 3.8 billion years back, um, there was some sort of maximum cratering rate in our solar system. So remember, um, back to the formation idea of the solar system, you've got, you know, planetesimals and, and um, just junk flying around, right? Uh, so there's a lot of material to impact objects. So you might expect, yes, that the cratering rate would be higher in those early times in the solar system's formation. And then it would drop off as more and more of that loose material got swept up into planets. And so that's why we think that the highlands are so, so much more cratered than the Maria. It doesn't mean that they're 10 times older. It just means that they have actually been around since that uh, period of early bombardment. Okay. So um, just to check on the distribution of the Maria, how are they distributed on the surface of the moon? Okay, I see like an even distribution of votes, which I expect because this, like I said, was a minor point in the book. Um, but it turns out that the lunar Maria are actually found mostly on the side facing Earth, which might seem a little weird. You might expect that, you know, why would, why would volcanoes be more likely to erupt on the surface toward the Earth rather than this, you know, the far surface? But if you think about the, um, the tidal forces from the Earth, it starts to make a little bit more sense. So the Earth exerts tidal forces on the moon in the same way that the moon exerts tidal forces on the Earth. Um, the moon is a smaller object. So the differences in forces between the two sides are larger than they would be for the Earth from the moon. And so as a result, the, the crust actually got thinner on the Earth side because not only did the, the moon squash, but also the, the dense interior material was able to be pulled a little bit farther toward the Earth than it was toward, you know, from the center of the moon. So as a result, there was actually thinner crust on the Earth side, and the Maria were able to form more on the Earth side as the lava was able to more easily seep up to the surface on that side. So kind of an application of the idea of tides in a completely different way here. I think it's kind of a cool picture because, well, we'll talk about the origin of the moon in a bit, but being able to piece together this history of you know, what happened throughout the life cycle of this object and how that related to what else was going on in the solar system, like the period of heavy bombardment, um, I just think that's totally fascinating. <laughs> 